for just a few minutes, the Lord shifted some things around uh, before the service in my spirit, and now I understand why uh, he did that. And I want to share a couple of thoughts with you this morning about going good to great. Everybody say good to great. Have you enjoyed this series so far? Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. You should have some clapping left over because none of us had anything much to clap about in football yesterday. Uh, so let's have some claps this morning. Amen. Amen. That, that, that'll be all right. Amen. I want us to go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, actually, 16 is where I want to go first. 1 Samuel 16. And as we've been teaching this series, and Pastor Ken did a masterful uh, job uh, last week uh, talking about greatness. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And uh, the week before, I kicked it off talking about a couple of different things. I'm going to touch on some of those uh, again. But I don't want you, there's a couple of things I want to say to you. I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this thought of greatness. Because some people can say, well, there's just so much. I mean, how do I do it? Well, you know, I got all these different areas. And I would encourage you as we talk about your marriage or family or your career or whatever area that God is pointing out to you. And here's what's going to happen. Are you listening? God is going to point out a couple of areas to you that you ought to start really believing to go from good to great and dealing with those things. And, and uh, so don't get overwhelmed like you got to fix it all today. Amen? I mean, you could, but if you don't, at least you're working on some things. Look at your neighbor and say, I am working on some stuff. But every day you make progress. You be a better version of yourself, and you start taking steps to being who you really could be. And, and men, uh, if, if you're believing to be a better husband, then take steps toward doing that. Don't here, Here's the dilemma that... We could preach all of this, and then nobody takes any area of their life and really makes it great. The Bible says we played the music, but you didn't dance. We, we preached it, but you didn't do anything with it. And that's a real danger to be a hearer of the word and not a doer. Everybody say, I'm going to be a doer. You see, you've got to get that down on the inside. You can't just take all of this. In fact, if you go back to what I preached, that series on, on faith, on on breakthrough faith and, and living by faith and having strong faith, tie it into this, you got to use your faith to be great. Amen? you got to use your faith to be great. you got to use your faith in your marriage and, and in your job and with your finances and all these things. And we're going to talk about some of these this morning. But I want to go and just deal with a couple of things. You know the story we've been in. David has been sent to the battle to... Uh, go up and take cheese and bread and crackers to his brothers that are up there. And when he gets up there, he finds out that the Philistines have a giant named Goliath. You know the story. And all that happens there with David and his brothers give him a hard time. And all of this stuff go, goes on. But the story didn't start there. In fact, there's a whole lot more to this story and the thing about being great is that it's a process. And here's what I want to tell you. Number one, if you're writing some things down today, in fact, I encourage you, I need you to write some stuff down today. At the same time, there'll be times you need to put your pen down and clap. You might even stand and go, oh, man, he's preaching now. I don't know. I, you know. I'm just saying there's some things God wants to say to us today. And the first thing is this. You need to be great in the process. David was great when he got out there and he finally, as Pastor Ken said, let that rock go and it, and it found its way to Goliath's forehead and Goliath is killed and he cuts off his head and there's a great celebration. That's great, but greatness didn't start there. It started in a process. There's a process that David was in. And in 1 Samuel 16, I'm going to get into more of this story in a couple of weeks, but Jesse is David's father, and David, Samuel has been sent to find the next king of Israel after Saul because the Lord was displeased with Saul. 
and he comes to Jesse's house, and he looks at all the different guys. And I'm going to deal with that in a couple of weeks. I thought I was going to have time today, but I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to rush. Is it all right if I don't rush? I mean, I might rush like right now, but I don't have to get through. I got about three weeks worth of stuff, about eight hours of stuff. You guys good to stay? Oh, no? Oh, okay. I just wanted to find out. All right, we won't stay that long. And it says in verse 11, so he's, he's looked at all the sons, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Are these it? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. How many, how many, how many youngest kids do I have? You're the youngest in your family. There, there's power in the youngest. I'm the youngest in my family. I got an older sister uh, who probably won't see this, which is a good thing. But come on, let's hear it for the youngest child. Amen. We're, we're, we're the blessed ones. We're, we're the favored ones, all right? And just kidding, just kidding. And he said, yet there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. So David is in a process to become king, but he's not king, he's keeping sheep. So here's what I want to tell you, that even if you're in the field, you need to be thinking about being great right where you are. Because David did not even know that he was about to be king. He was just in his field. He's not even with the rest of the family. All the brothers are inside, right? All the family's inside. David's not even invited. David doesn't get offended. Some people don't, you know, they don't get included in something, you know. I'm all mad, I'm this, I'm that. David's like, that's not my portion. I'm not supposed to be in there. Where am I supposed to be, David? In the field, keeping the sheep. We said this last week, or two weeks ago, about being faithful over the little things in life will take you to greatness. But you don't know it's taking you to greatness. You're just there doing what you are supposed to do. Young adults, get this. Don't worry about having the corner office. Just Be faithful right where you are. The the corner office will take care of itself. Do the natural and expect the supernatural. Here's what happens. People get given platforms in life that they don't take care of. Those sheep were not David's. Were they? Whose were they? Daddy's. They were Jesse's sheep. But David had been given a platform in a field that he was responsible for. And people that you give responsibility to, you need to watch how are they managing what isn't theirs. I, that, I, I, because some people will get a platform and then dishonor it. Because they think it's theirs. Those sheep weren't his. I have no right to dishonor those sheep because they're not mine. And I can't dishonor that platform because it, it was given to me. I didn't, I didn't earn it. The only thing I got was I happened to be Jesse's boy. And, and now... Uh, I'm responsible for something that I've been given. You better watch the people you give stuff to. How do they handle? That's the leadership principle. He who is faithful over that which is another man's will be given his own. You see, and a lot of people in today's world don't understand that. They think whatever they got, it's theirs, it's mine. You know, I got it. No, no. You could be, if you've been given a platform to manage, it could be that you are in a test for something greater. 
but you don't even know you're in a test. You're just there with a bunch of sheep smelling like smelly sheep smell. But you got to be great in the process. Don't forget what it took to get you where you are. David honored where he was and he did what was needed. You got to be responsible for your field. It was David's responsibility to care for something that wasn't his. And when you can do that, you are elevating and putting yourself in a place where you could be promoted to greatness. But if you can't manage that which belongs to somebody else because you think you know better, it doesn't have anything to do with what you know about sheep. It has to do with honor and what you are doing to handle what you have been given. Right? This, if you can't manage that, why do you think God's going to give you more? You just, David said, and David's qualification to go up against something bigger was the honor that he showed back in a time when no one was looking. Follow me. What did he say when he got before the king? He didn't say, oh, uh, yeah, I'm so great. I'm this. I'm, uh, you know, he, he didn't give reasons of what he was going to do. He did to Goliath. But he went back to the honor that he showed in the field over something that wasn't his. So, King, if I'll take care of a lion and a bear over something that wasn't mine, you can be guaranteed that this Philistine will fall like one of them because I understand what it takes to manage what I've been given. It was his honor is the bridge to access. If David didn't honor what he had in the field, he wouldn't have been given access to go fight Goliath. It, the story goes that they went and they got David. What if David said, I ain't leaving? Well, Daddy wants you. I don't care. I'm not doing that. Well, people don't tell Daddy no. People tell daddies no all the time. Who are you kidding? People don't act with honor. They're like, well, I want to do my own thing. I want to do this. I want to do that. I mean, I got this and I got that. And I, you know, and I, I, you know, if you're out in corporate America, man, it can be cutthroat. There's not a lot of honor. That's why you better get the supernatural on your natural. And what if David had said, no, I don't want to go. I, I, I don't care what dad said. I'm mad at him. Your kids ever tell you no? Yeah, like once, you know. <laughs> you know. What if he'd said what he'd lost his access to go in and do what he was supposed to do? Maybe our lack of obedience and lack of honor has kept us from getting to the place of kingship that God has called us to be. And we got to fix some things on the foundation of where I came from and how I handled the field that I was in if I'm ever going to achieve and get to where I want to go. Is that helping anybody? Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> David did what was needed. I, I, I got more in my spirit, but I want to I wanna get into this too real quickly. I got a few more minutes. The second thing I want to tell you today, and this is going back to what I said a couple of weeks ago as well, but I want to elaborate. You don't have... There is not a giant problem. There is a system problem. Look over in 1 Samuel 17. You don't really have a giant problem. It's how you're attacking your giant. And in verse 38 of 1 Samuel 17, it says, so now David's going up to fight Goliath, and he comes up to Saul, and Saul's like, okay, David, you can go, but here... In verse 38, Saul clothed David with his armor. Everybody say his armor. And he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of mail. 
Now, David is probably anywhere from 15 to 17 years old. And David fastened his sword to his armor, and he tried to walk, for he had not tested them. You're asking me to do something with stuff that I've not even seen before. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. And David took them off. In other words, David is saying, look, Saul, I can go get Goliath. But if you force me to fit into your plan of attack, I'm not going to be able to do this thing. And so David had to switch systems. The system of Saul would not have killed the Goliath that David was facing. Goliath would have run at him and cut his head off because he was all encumbered with all this stuff and all this heavy armor and a sword that he he couldn't hardly wield. But he didn't just say, look, That system doesn't work. He wasn't being arrogant, but he knew he had a system that would work. And you can say, you know what? I I, I don't think I can handle the world system anymore because it doesn't work. But it doesn't mean you don't get to do anything. You still got to do something. Because the next verse says, David went and he picked up not one, not two, not three, not four. He picked up five smooth stones. And a slingshot. He's a bad boy with a slingshot. What's he basing it on? I've already honored my field by killing a lion and a bear. So now I got five rocks. I'm going to take care of the giant. But but I'm doing it with a new system. And here's what I want to declare to you today. Some of you got a new system getting born. Some of you are waking up to a new system. And here's what I want to tell you, if I, if, if I can get through this, if not, I'll come back and deal with it in a couple of weeks. A system is a way of getting things done. Write that down. A system allows you more efficiency, effectiveness, more peace, and more victories. But you've got to have a system. You've got to have a system. A system is how you're going to get things done. And the systems that we deal with in the world today are designed to keep you from ever being great. And you got to break through those. And, and I'm going to list some systems that have gone on, and there's a lot of them, but let, let's see if we can talk about a couple of them for just a couple of minutes. You have to look at your life. Listen to me. you got to look at your life. And make a mental decision. Make a, it's a spiritual, but it's in your mind. Decision. I recognize that I'm not the husband that I need to be. We are male by birth and men by choice. Dr. Ed Cole from 35 years ago said that, and I've never forgotten it. So I get to choose. I make a mental decision. This is how I'm going to live my life. My days of living half-hearted, my days of living uh, below my potential, my days of of being mediocre have come to an end. But the systems are designed and have been designed in the world to keep you from being great. Let me say this. There have been racial systems that have held back people of color that have been out there that make it, have made it even harder for believing Christians to break through. But that's why i got to keep preaching to everybody, don't exclude the God factor. Amen. Because that can be the breakthrough that you need. Amen. But you have to make a decision that I'm switching systems. There is, everybody say, I'm switching systems. So let me list these for you. Number one, there's a spiritual system. You got to get back to the word and back to prayer. 
That's the system that works. Amen? Yeah, somebody's trying to clap right there. That's, that's worthy of a hand clap. you got to get back to this. We are not called to be culturally relevant. We are called to be counterculture. While the rest of the world says, oh, abortion on demand, abortion after birth, all of that. we got to stand and say, wait a minute. Amen? we got to stand up. we got to go back to the Word. we got to say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stand. I'm not going to bow to the pressures of the world. But remember, the world system made to keep you from being great. Nope, it's going to hold you back. I'll show you a couple of examples. Number two, what's your home system? Some of you, you got to switch home systems. Because the system that you are currently working under is keeping your house in chaos. You know, getting kids out of bed in the morning to go to school, feeding them breakfast. How, what is your system? Well, the system is, is we all wake up late and we're rushing around and nobody has their clothes ready and homework can't be found and the dog's yapping at us and there's no breakfast and... It's awfully quiet in this church. I'm just, I kind of feel that weight of maybe I hit on something there. It's like, Pastor's got a camera in our house. He knows what. No, I just know how everybody's house runs at one time or another. What's your system to fix that? I'm switching systems. I'm not going to live like that. We're not going to do that. Never know, never know what dinner is. When's dinner? What are we having? The kids, this, who's, who's doing that? And it's, it's crazy you got to switch home systems. Are you praying in your home? Are you, are you sitting your kids down and praying, men? Men, we're called to be the priest of our home. we gotta, we got to help lead that. If, you don't have, if there's not a man in the house, then, ladies, God will give you that anointing. I mean, lead, lead. you got to have that home system in place, how you run things. Financial systems, how do you handle money? How you handle it? I don't know. We spend it till it's gone. It's not a good system. It's not a good system. Well, I don't know. We, you know, we spend here, and some people, well, I don't know. We, we go over here. We do this. You know, I don't, I don't know. I knew a lady one time. She hadn't balanced a checkbook for like 18 years. I'm like, well, how much money do you have? I don't know. I don't know. Like, and she made a lot of money. It's like, how do you, how do you, how, I, 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 I can't figure that out. I mean, you got to have a financial system of how you handle things in your home and how things are done and what are you saving and what are you investing. And you got to have a system. you got to switch systems because the world doesn't want you to have a good system. Health systems. Are you taking care of God's temple? What are you doing? How, how are you taking care of God's temple? Well, I only eat two donuts a day. I, well... That's better than four, but what are you doing to take care of God's temple? Elder Lamar and Adrian a few uh, months ago decided for their health they were going to switch systems. And and they got off of the system that keeps you on diabetic medicine and keeps you uh, uh, on pills and all. And they said, you know what? We're not going to eat like everybody else. So Lamar's lost 30 pounds. Yeah. You don't ever ask a woman those questions, but I ask a man. And and I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. And and got off your cholesterol medicine, blood pressure medicine, all of that stuff in how many months? Four months. You didn't know, but you know why? He switched systems. The, the, the world system wants to fill you with sugar and um, caffeine. Well, nothing wrong with caffeine. Uh, yeah. Stop. I'm trying to get done. Um, Pills, 
and then you take these pills, and then, you know, you got to hear all the disclaimers on there about that depression pill. It's going to cause you to sweat, and it's going to cause you to hold your right arm funny, and it's going to cause you to have diarrhea, and then you might die at the end of all of that. Oh, that's a good answer. How are we taking care of God's temple? What are we doing? Job systems, how, how you work, how do you function on your job? How, what honor are you showing to what you've been given on your job? Relationship, and there's a lot more there. Relationship systems, how do you respond to your spouse or family? How, how are you responding? Are you being the wife you need to be, the husband, are you the parent? Are you learning? Are you growing? The world, the, the, the world just says, well, if you don't get along, just divorce. If you don't, if you don't like something, just leave. You know, don't get married. Sleep around. Don't, don't have a marriage contract. You know, sleep with a bunch of people before you get married. All of that. We, we got to stop. The system's wrong. David said, if I'm going to be great, I can't be great according to the world. I got to be great according to the word. I've got to do what God has told me to do in all my relationships and, and how I function and, and I get stressed out and I, and I have all this anxiety and all of that and then that affects my health and then I take a pill and it makes me sick and another one makes me fat and I take another one to make me skinny and I do all of this and the system, the system has got to change. you got to, you got to shift. You got to go. I'm done. I'm done living. I'm done living that way. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not living that way. And lastly, the seventh thing is just the world system. And that kind of encompasses all of it. But in the Bible, the world system is always represented by Babylon. And some of you are learning this in kingdom class that Babylon is a system. Listen carefully. The system is designed to keep you broke. The system is designed for you to work 50 years, struggle, make a living, do whatever, have a little money, maybe set aside. Maybe you'll get social security, social, social, social security, world security, right? How do I know it's broken? How do I know they want to keep you down? Because if you have money in the bank, you're earning about a quarter of a percent, 0.25% of everything you have. You have a credit card. You are paying the bank 18% for the privilege of having their card. So who's getting rich when they pay you a quarter of a percent, the institution, the man, the, the corp, whatever, whoever it is, says you're, you're worthy of a quarter of a percent. And if you give it to us for five years, we might pay you one. Well, that's a good boy. I got, I got a five-year deal for one percent. But to borrow money to go get a card, they want to charge you 18 somebody's on the wrong end of that. That's why the Bible said that we are to be a lender and not a borrower. Because you getting taken. Don't tell me the world's set up to make you rich. You got to get off that system. That's why, that's why we're on a system called sowing and reaping. That's why I believe when we bring the tithe into the storehouse that there is more than enough. I serve in Ephesians 3.20, God, that doesn't think about quarter percents, one percent, three percent, 18 percent. I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Watch what's happening in today's world and then I'm done. The world is trying to separate everybody into the haves and the have-nots. That's the world system. There are the haves and there are the have-nots. 
And if you have X amount, you're one of the haves. And if you don't get to be in the haves, then you're in the have-nots. That's the way, I mean, and you see, we are tempted to fall into that trap of saying, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, one's bad, one's good, have, have nots, all that. Here's the difference. In the kingdom, everybody is a have. You got to stay with me. In the kingdom, every, there are no have nots in the kingdom of God. I have the blessing of the Lord. I'm a have. Are you a have or a have not? What system are you talking about? If you're looking at the world, I might be a have not. But I'm not in that system. I'm, in, I'm not in Babylon. I'm in the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, I have prosperity. I have joy. I have peace. I am a have. I'm not a have not. I'm not a have not. I'm done living like that. I'm not a have not. I'm a have in the kingdom of God. I have joy. I have breakthrough. I have peace. I have everything that I'm ever going to need in the kingdom. Not in Babylon. Everybody stand up. In the kingdom, in the kingdom it's different. There's no have and have nots. Not in the kingdom. You got to quit looking at the world system. You got to keep thinking, well, there's this and there's that. that. No, 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 no. I'm changing systems. I'm not living, I'm not living low life anymore. That's an attitude. You say, well, you know, does that mean you're gonna, you know, have five million dollars by the end of the day? It's an attitude, it's a shift, it's a mentality of how I live. I, I'm not gonna live. Gossiping. I'm not going to live backbiting. I'm not going to live down here where everybody else, you know, talks about the have-nots and have this and church this and that. That's not being honoring to the field I've been given. If I don't handle you right, then I'm not honoring. If I don't, if I don't preach to you right, if I don't, if I, you know, go behind your back and I talk bad about you, then I'm not honoring the field that I've been given. You, you're not mine. You're his. I, I, I'm going to be responsible for how I manage, how I, how I handled what I've been given. Let, let me say one other thing, and then I'm going to talk about it next time. In the world, they tell you, and this is, this is a real thing. When, I should have said this under health. People deal with mental health issues in today's world. Pastors deal with it. Pastor took his life out in California a couple weeks ago. It's happened numerous times this year. But every career, every, every background. And I want to tell you something. If you try to fight that in the world, you're not going to do it. But get help. Get help. It's not, I, people don't like to talk about it. People are like, oh, it's, you know, it, it's embarrassing. I, I'll, I'll get through. I'll get, particularly men. We'll get better. We'll get better. But you don't. Well, and then and people say, well, if you just had more faith, if you just believe harder. Listen, just get help. Get help. Almost every day, I hear voices tell me, you're not good enough surprise you? Oh, that's Pastor Steve. He, boy, he's, you know, he's big and bad. He eats demons for breakfast. <laughs> Every day. The enemy tries to tell me you're not good enough to do what you're doing. You can't do it. You can't do it. Brother Tim reminded me that years ago, driving down the road, I thought I was having a heart attack. I pulled over and I said, Lord, I'm I, I, I can't do this. But I know the God who lives in me. And I know how to fight. And I know that it's not me, but it's him. And I know that it's not you, it's Jesus. And whatever you're fighting, whatever you're going through, 
Don't let the enemy lie to you and say you're not good enough. You're, because in the kingdom you are. You're not just good, you're great. You're great in the kingdom of God. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Spirit of God, we'll, we'll deal with that more in a couple of weeks. But I want to just tell you that you're switching systems. That's what I came to tell you today. That's what I came to tell you. I want you to switch systems. Switch healthcare systems. S- switch financial systems. Get out of living like Babylon. Be a tither. Be a giver. If you didn't give today, give before the day's over. Write the check. Leave it. Switch systems. That is just proof that I'm switching systems. When I can trust God with my tithe, when I can say that I I switch systems, I'm a tither, I'm getting off of the old way of trying to hoard it all myself. Switch, Switch mental systems. Switch home systems, the way you've been running your home. Switch. Do something different. Don't just be a hearer. Be a doer. Switch. In the name of Jesus, that thought of not being good enough is broken off of your life. In the name of Jesus, that depression, those suicidal thoughts, those things that would come to harm you, those things that would come to wreck you are broken off of your life. And there's not enough talk about that in the kingdom, in the church. But I take authority over that. And you're going to be a testimony, not a statistic. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. Lord, we declare your glory and your honor. And we're going to be faithful. And we're going to take what we've been given, the money we've been given, and be faithful over it, the time we've been given, the, the, the talent we've been given. Father, we're switching the systems that we've lived in. Our career, the way we handle our job and what we do and how we function. God, there's a shift. And here's what's going to happen, church, in at least two areas. In fact, maybe only two right now. The Lord's going to point out to you, start working on these two. You don't have to work on all seven or ten, however many come up with. Just start getting better in these two. Maybe it's your health. Do something different. Just do it differently. Take authority over it. And say, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not eating like that. I'm not spending money like that. I'm not, I'm getting a grip on these things. Spirit of God, help Trinity today, Lord. There is an anointing on this house. There is an anointing on this house to break through to greatness. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for that? I mean, are you really ready? I mean, if I call you on Tuesday, are you going to be able to say, hey, I'm doing something. I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Spirit of God, have your way. Father, we thank you for it. Lord, you did what needed to be done today. Father, we receive it. Just, just sing a chorus of something. Just, just seal that in with us right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you split the sea so I oh, could there you walk. Go. I right changed systems, it. and you split the sea for me. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Yeah. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child. I'm not a child of the world anymore. I'm a child of God. You split the sea. Sing. You, you split, split the sea so I could Yes, you did, Lord. Right through, through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, today 
I have changed systems. I'm off of the world's way, and I'm on to your way. I'm going to do it by your system. Certain things that I've been doing are coming to an end. Things that have been in the world are coming to an end. I don't live like that, act like that, talk like that. In the name of Jesus, I'm different today. I switch systems. In the name of Jesus, what's been broken is made whole. And I receive today that there's a new way. There is a new way of living my life, of directing my home. In the name of Jesus, I operate in that new way. It's different. It's stretching me, but it's a better way. And I receive this word. I am not of the world. I am of the kingdom. And I give you all the praise all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout if you switch systems today. I switch systems today. I did. No, come on. Give him 10 more seconds. Yeah. Yeah. A new system, praise. Hallelujah.